Hey guys, welcome back to Not One Videos. Today I'm doing something completely different that I've never done on the channel before. I'm going to try and do some 3D scanning. I'm going to try and scan some of my terrain that I've made and see if I can turn it into STLs. So a little while ago my friend Joe Levine over at Encounter Terrain showed that he'd got the Rebel Point Pop 3D scanner. So on a whim I sent him an email and said can I do a little review of your product? Mostly because I wanted a 3D scanner and they actually got back to me and said, yeah, sure. So I have a 3D scanner. I am going to get it out of its box. I'm going to set it up and see if we can scan some terrain. Okay, before I jump into the actual scanning, I thought I would just show you guys what comes in the box real quick. Obviously you've got the scanner, which I will show to you properly in a minute, a black sheet and some scan marker stickers. Then you get this cool Roman head bust thing, which is for your first test scans, some clips and bits for attaching your phone to the scanner if you wish. And lastly, you get this cool turntable that you place your scan subject on before scanning. Inside the scanner box, you get this cool little telescopic tripod, and of course, you get the scanner, which is easily attached to the tripod with the screw attachment on the back. And that's how easy it is to set this thing up, plug it into your USB 3 port on your computer, and you're ready to scan. So I watched a few YouTube videos about the scanner before getting started, and I noted that the scanner doesn't pick up dark colors as well, so I thought I'd make a little booth with the black sheet so that the scanner found it easier to pick up the subject matter. Later, I discovered that this actually wasn't necessary. As you can see, I started off by attempting to scan the Roman bust that came in the package, and gladly the scanner was working and bringing the image into the handy scan software, but my first attempts were not working at all. The scanner kept picking up the background, which was really frustrating because it seemed to be picking up the bust really nicely. And my first complete scan looked like this, almost like the symbiote from Venom was taking control of the bust. Even though the head in the middle looked disfigured, this still looks pretty cool, but I had to figure out a way to get rid of the background. Okay, so I've set the whole thing up again. I've moved it a little bit further back from the background and yep, it looks like everything is ready to go. It says excellent. Let's give it another try. Okay, so that was my first leap forward on the learning curve. The color of the background doesn't seem to matter as long as you have your subject matter far enough away. Also, a pretty cool feature of the Handy Scan software is that you can pause your scan part way through to reposition your piece on the turntable, meaning that you can get a complete scan. So with those minor adjustments, I was able to jump from scan that looked like an explosion to pretty much a perfect scan of the Roman bust. Right, now it's time to have some fun and see if we can scan some handmade tabletop terrain pieces and turn them into STL files. I'm jumping in at the deep end with this piece of scattered terrain that I made here on the channel. This was probably the wrong place to start because there are lots of details in this piece and a lot of dark colours in and around the tree trunk etc. And as you can see, the scanner really wasn't picking up the central part of the tree, resulting in this very globular looking scan. Maybe as I become more familiar with the controls in the software, I will be able to achieve a better result with a piece like this down the line. But for now, let's try something a little bit simpler, like this modular dungeon door. I made this piece when we had Raymond Nix from Gut DM on the Crazy Crafter livestream last year, and I was quite excited to see if I could get this to turn out into a decent scan. But again, I was having more problems to troubleshoot as I was learning how to use this thing. Okay, this piece has got too much black in it, too many dark bits and it's just not showing up. I'm going to repaint it a light grey and then hopefully it'll pick it up. So when I started making this video I was really hoping that I would be able to scan everything perfectly but as with most new tools you have to go through a period of learning how to actually use it. As you can see repainting the door definitely worked and the scanner was able to achieve a better scan but I still lost a bit more detail than I would like. I honestly feel though that this is an error on my part and as I learn how to use the scanner I will be able to get a much better scan of this door at some point in the future. Okay, seeing as it is Halloween just around the corner I thought I would try and scan my little hand carved gravestone set and turn them into printable STL files. At first I thought this was going to have the exact same problem as before with the piece being too dark but I was pleasantly surprised to get quite a good scan of this piece. I think this is definitely passable, especially if I scale it down to something like a 28mm scale for D&D. The only problem is that the base looks messy around the edges and needed hollowing so that the print didn't take up too much resin. I didn't have a clue where to start with this, so I called on the help of my good friend Zane from Zane Morgan Crafts to make the final adjustments for me. 
Okay, so basically when you are importing this 3D scan into Blender or your slicing software, automatically it's probably not going to have a bottom to the mesh. It's going to be hollow. So what we're going to do is we're going to smooth out the bottom of the mesh from the 3D scanner, flatten it, and conceal it. That way it is a solid mesh, and that way the slicing software can read it and translate that into Printing. So after importing the model into Blender, I bisected the mesh and extrude inward, which allows me to create a hollowed base. After I'm done sealing it off, it's good to send over to a slicing software and support it. And sent. You're welcome, Michael. With one viable STL file gladly in the bag, it was time to move on to the scan I was most looking forward to, my hand-carved dwarven pillars. I've been asked to carve these a few times by people and the idea of making an STL file available to print is really cool. The awesome thing is, by the time that I had moved on to this scan, I had started to get used to the handy scan software and the setup of the scanner itself, so immediately I was getting great scans, losing hardly any detail at all. I think the size and the colour of the pillars also helped a lot with this. Once again there were a few little details in this scan that needed cleaning up so I sent it off to Zane yet again and not only did he sort out those but he also pre-supported the STL file and sent it back to me ready to print. The only problem with having these cool STL files ready to print is that you need a 3D printer. I have been avoiding getting one of these for quite some time, but having seen the cool things that some of my friends are doing on YouTube, I had to get one. So perhaps a little cheekily, I sent Eligu an email which was gladly really well received and they agreed to send me out the Mars 2 Pro. To say I was excited about this is definitely an understatement. Yet again, trying to skip steps to speed up the learning curve, I called Zane to help me out with the setup of the printer. Is it moving? Yeah, it's going down, yeah. Okay, so it's all plugged in and I put the test print on and it's at about 20% and it all seems to be working. Um, my friend Zane from Zane Morgan Crafts was on the phone there with me, helping me sort it all out. So I'm feeling pretty confident that it's going to work. I haven't got a clue about 3D printing. I don't want to sound like I know anything about 3D printing. I don't. This is literally my first time I've ever touched a 3D printer. This is the first time I've ever done a print. So you're not going to learn anything new. The point of this video for me is uh, I did my 3D scans of some of my terrain and I want to see if I can print that off and just to see the quality of those prints. So once this test print has happened and I've washed up the model, I am going to load in one of the SDLs for probably the Dwarven Pillar and see if I can print it off. So excitedly I loaded the pillar STL into the printer and pressed play only to discover that the print was going to take 8 hours. Time to get some sleep. So it's 4.30 in the morning. I just woke up to come in and check on this print to see if it needed some more resin. And it seems to be working real good. And it's the morning. Seeing something that I have hand carved start to emerge from what looks like some sort of primordial slime is literally one of the coolest things I have gotten to do with this hobby so far. The prospect of making something with your own hands that can then be potentially enjoyed by other people with a click of a few buttons is incredible. I mean, I remember playing Chucky Egg on the Spectrum as a kid, so the leaps forward in technology in the last 30 years is mind blowing. And it's still moving fast, so better not to get left behind. Anyway, I forgot to mention that the resin I was using for my prints was the Eligu water washable resin. Now I have nothing to compare it to because this is literally my first print, but all I can say is that the whole process of cleaning up a print couldn't have been easier. Also one cool thing to discover is that the structural supports are pretty cool. Straight away my brain starts saying what can I turn these into, but I'm sure I'm not the first person to think that. And there we have it, my first ever print and I couldn't be happier. I'm really impressed with the level of detail that the Revel Point 3D Pop scanner managed to achieve. Not only that, but the scale is perfect. No adjustments were made to the size of the scan before printing, so that is really impressive. 
Having achieved a more than successful print with the Dwarven Pillar, I had to print out the Great Stones STL. I scaled this down to a 28mm scale, gave it a very quick paint job, added a sprinkle of static grass, and I think it looks really cool. So there we go guys, that's the end of my 3D scanning and printing adventure. Just want to say thanks to Revelpoint for sending me out the 3D scanner. I really, really like the scans that I got that were successful. Um, I need to learn better, I think, to get better scans at some of the smaller things, more detailed things. I think that I can get better scans. Um, or I could build them a little bit bigger um, to make STL files and then scale them down. Also, just want to say thanks to Aligu for sending me out the Mars 2 Pro um, because now I can print stuff and start to use that in my terrain, which I'm so excited about. And also, I have printed it off and painted my Dorman pillar. Um, and yeah, if you guys can guess which one is the printed one and which one is the hand card one, let me know in the comments below. We'll call this one A and we'll call this one B. And lastly, just to say that for the STL files, I'm going to be giving these away to my patrons for free if anyone wants to print them off. So I'll be sending you guys an email over on Patreon and you can print off a Dorman pillar or you can uh, print off the Graves uh, STL. And yeah, on that note, I just want to say a massive thanks as always to my patrons. You guys are awesome. And yeah, more content coming your way very, very soon. If you want to check out Patreon, there is a link in the description below this video. All right, guys, thanks very much. I've got a video coming out on Halloween, so stay tuned for that. All the best. Bye. Before I go, guys, I just want to say a massive thanks to Zayn for all his help getting me started on my 3D printing journey. Please head over to his channel and subscribe for some awesome terrain, 3D printing and hobby related content. I will leave a link in the description below this video. See you next time, guys. Bye.